to meet before. My name is Leanna. Today's going to be a quick flow, about 30 minutes, just to move our body and our mind a little bit. I know I sure could use it. Um, just remember, I'm going to be giving you options. Please choose the option that works best for your body, knowing that we all show up on our mat today for a different reason, needing a little bit something um, different from our practice. So just honor your body and what you need from this practice, and if you do that, we'll be sure to enjoy. We're going to begin on air in child's pose. You have two options. You can take knees, mat width, big toes to touch, and hips to the heels. And then if you prefer, you can also have knees together, which is a little bit more traditional of a child's pose, and a release of the lower back. Take some time to get grounded. Maybe reach those arms out in front of you. Allowing your forehead to rest on the mat. Good, let's all take the deepest inhale we've taken all morning. Exhale, side out the mouth. Just allow yourself to arrive. Looking to this next half hour as your opportunity just to be present, just to be here. With each inhale and exhale, allow something in you to settle. Allow something in you to soften. And just remember your breath today. If at any point you lose it, take a break. Come right back here to child pose and come back to us when you're ready. Two more breaths here. Good, headed towards a side body stretch. Keep your hips down towards your heels, but walk your hands over towards the right. Continue to pull your left hip down towards your heels as you reach through those fingertips. Should feel a nice stretch in that side body. Maybe even applying a little bit of pressure into that left palm, feeling that expansion in the side body. Good, next inhale, walk those hands through center. Let's head to the other side, walk them to the left. Continuing to pull that right hip down towards the heel. Reaching through the fingertips as you pull the hips down. And maybe you wanna apply a little bit of pressure into that right palm and feel the side body expand. Good, inhale yourself back to center, child's pose. Just remember the space. Know that it's available to you at any time throughout this practice. Next inhale, we're all gonna meet up in tabletop. Take your time. When you get there, hands come directly underneath shoulders, knees come directly underneath hips. I always like to begin with a little cat cow. So when you're ready, on the inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin and chest. And on the exhale, chin to chest, navel to spine, and round. Taking it at your pace, your breath, inhaling cow, exhaling cat. If you want to add a toe stretch, you can tuck your toes on the cow, so tuck toes, inhale, drop belly, lift chin and chest, exhale, chin to chest, navel to spine. Your pace, your breath, just a few more. Last round here. Good, settling in to tabletop. Maybe you're guessing if I'm gonna skip puppy, but I just can't do it. So we're headed to puppy. Hips stay directly over the knees. Walk the hands forward and allow the chest to dip towards the mat. So puppy or melted heart pose. Just opening the pectorals and the shoulders here, creating a little bit of space, a little bit of length or we build strength. One more breath. Beautiful, slowly press into the palms and then bring yourself back to tabletop. Once you get to tabletop, step your right foot back, tuck your toes, press through your heel and pause here to enjoy a calf stretch. Reaching through crown ahead, pressing through heel. And then we're gonna try something a little bit different today. 
So staying in this position, you're tucked in the right toes, pressing through heel. I want you to press into the ball of the right foot, engage your core, press into your hands, and then hover that left knee. See how you feel here, building some strength in our core. Maybe you can take it further and bring the left knee closer to the chest. We're here for a couple breaths. Separate those shoulder blades. Don't lean that upper back slightly. Modification, just hover the knee slightly. Two more breaths, you can do this. Last one. And then exhale, replace that left knee to the mat. Good job, you guys. Bring your attention towards your lower abdomen, maybe a slight tuck of that pelvis. We're engaged in our lower abdomen, and then we'll lift our right leg. Hips are square to the mat. We're headed towards sunburn. So option for both hands down is the modification or left arm out, palm face in, thumb up, strong inhale. And on the exhale, curl in, chin to chest, elbow to knee. Good, inhale to extend. Exhale to curl. Three more at your own pace. Inhaling to extend. Exhale to curl. Last two. Last one. And on the next extension, I'll ask that you hold, building some strength. Continue to reach through fingertips, press through heel. Try to maintain length in your right shoulder, don't dump it into it. And on the next exhale, left palm to the mat if it was lifted. Right foot comes over the left, tuck your toes, press through your heel, gaze over your left shoulder. Good, when you're done, I'll meet you back in tabletop. If you feel like you built any tension in your right wrist, you can always pause to roll it out. You can even flip to the back of the right hand, fingertips facing the knee. But if you choose that, just not too much pressure applied. Maybe finding some organic movement here. Beautiful. Let's all meet back in tabletop. Step the left foot back, tuck the toes, press through the heel, enjoy the calf stretch. Reach through the crown of the head for that spinal extension. Check in with your hands, fingers are wide, pointer fingers parallel with the side of the mat. We're gonna build a little bit of strength here, so find stillness. Pressing into the ball of that left foot, engage the core, press into the hands, and hover that right knee. If you're feeling good here, maybe take it higher, the knee comes close to the chest, shoulder blades separate slightly. We've got a static hold. I want you to remember your strength. Continue to breathe. Two more, you got this. I don't know if I do, but you do. <laughs> All right, next exhale, replace that right knee to the mat. Good job, you guys. Then bring the attention back to the lower abdomen and make sure you're engaged there for, to protect your lumbar spine. When you're ready, lift the left leg, hips are square to the mat. Option always for both hands down and just work with the leg. Otherwise, right arm is out, just like a handshake. Try to stay mindful that you haven't sunken any weight into your left shoulder. You create length there. Strong inhale. And on the exhale, curl in. Good. Inhale to extend. Exhale to curl. Three more at your own pace. Last two. Last one. Beautiful, on the extension, I'm gonna ask that you hold. Reaching through fingertips, pressing through heel. Remember, you can always place the right hand down to modify. Little spinal balance here, sunbird. Next exhale, right palm back to the mat. Left foot over the right, tuck toes. Press through heel, gaze over right shoulder. One more breath. And I'll meet you back in table. Good, option to roll out the other wrist, left wrist. Maybe even flipping to the back of the hand. Fingertips facing the knee. Maybe some organic movement. And then we'll meet back in tabletop. Check back in with hands. So this is so important, you'll hear me say it in every one of my classes. Fingers as wide as you can get them. Trying not to let the weight settle into the heel of this hand, but also pressing into pads of knuckles 
and fingertips to protect our wrists. We weren't meant to stand on our hands, so try to stay mindful of that. Tucking toes, let's lift our hips to the sky. It's our first down dog. I want you to get comfortable here. You can pedal it out, bend those knees left and right. Remembering the goal of this posture is an elongated and decompressed spine. Please do not worry if your heels don't hit the mat. It's not what this is about. Option to bend the knees, feel the length of that spine. You can keep those knees bent or slowly begin to straighten as long as your spine can stay long. On your inhale, we're all going to come to the balls of our feet. And on your exhale, shift your heels to the right, drop them if you're able, and gaze under that left underarm. Option to stay right here, open yourself up to a side plank. Your practice, your choice, please feel empowered to choose the option that works for your body. Next exhale, left palm to the mat, rolling back to the balls of the feet, shift those heels left, drop the heels, gaze under right underarm, option to stay right there or lift the right arm up into Vashisthasana. Job, you guys. Next exhale, right palm to the mat. We're all shifting forward to a plank, shoulders over wrists. Anything involving plank today, modification would be knees down. You're still building strength, so honor your body. Feel free to drop your knees at any point. If you're there, make sure you do stay engaged in your core. Otherwise, toes tucked, pressing through the heels, reaching through the crown of the head. Two more breaths. You got this. And on the next exhale, hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Every time we hinge to down dog today, think about your core and your abdominal muscles helping to pull your hips high as opposed to your hands pressing them that way. Looking between the hands, bend the knees. We're going to walk it forward to ragdoll. Feet are about hip width. Torso falls down towards the thighs. Bend the knees as much as you need. Sway left and right, maybe. Shake the head out, yes and no. Gravity is doing all the work here. Good, settling into center. We're headed towards a twist. So if you don't have, um, if you can't quite reach the floor, you're gonna wanna block. Bend in the left knee, left palm plants, right arm will lift up. Gaze at the ceiling if okay for the neck, otherwise gaze down. One more inhale. And then exhale, release. Let's try the other side. Bend the right knee, right palm plant, left arm lift. One more strong inhale. And then exhale, let it go. Good. Slight micro bend in the knees. We're all just going to roll up slow together. And when you get to the top, shoulders are up and back. Palms are by the sides, palms face forward, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Crown of the head's tall, shoulders draw away from those ears. On your inhale, arms will reach up. And on your exhale, bring your hands to your heart. We're going to try that together two more times. Imagine what you need more of in your heart. Inhale, arms reach up, grab whatever that is. Exhale, bring it to the heart. One more, just like that. Inhale. Exhale, bring it to the heart. Pause here, maybe close the eyes. Maybe take a moment to set an intention for your practice. Maybe anything you choose. Maybe amongst this chaos, we choose gratitude. Reminding ourselves of one thing we're grateful for today. Beautiful. Next inhale, arms back up. And on the exhale, hinge of the hips, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, fingertips can come to shins, crown of the head will reach forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step yourself to plank, always the option to drop your knees down. We're headed all the way to our bellies. Let's keep our elbows in narrow towards our ribs, all the way down. Once you get down, untuck your toes. We're headed to a shoulder stretch together. So left palm will stay underneath left shoulder, right arm will come out to a T. You're gonna press yourself into the left palm as you begin to open up. Stacking your shoulders and your hips. If you want a little bit more, you can bend your left knee and place the left foot behind the right leg. If this brings any pain, you cannot open up all the way. So listen to your body, stretching right where that pectoral meets the shoulder. 
Next exhale, let's roll to our bellies and head to the other side. Right hand underneath right shoulder, left arm out to the T. Press into that right palm as you begin to open up. Maybe you stack the hips and the legs. Maybe you bend in the right knee, right foot comes behind the left leg. Good, next exhale, roll to your belly. Hands come to outer edges of the ribs, elbows hug in. Let's try a few cobras together. Inhale, heart forward and up. This isn't just about height, but also length. Exhale, lower. Two more like that, inhale up. Exhale down. Last one. Good, we're all gonna challenge ourselves today by tucking our toes Hugging our elbows in narrow, becoming one strong board and pressing ourselves to plank and then hinging back, downward facing. Double breaths in downward facing dog. Good, look between those hands, bend your knees, step, float, or hop forward. Inhale, half lift flat back. Exhale, fold. On your inhale, we'll rise, arms will reach up, gaze is up. And on the exhale today, take cactus arms, lift your heart, open your throat. Good, inhale, arms back up, and on the exhale, fold. Beautiful, inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant palm, step yourself to plank, option for knees down. I'm gonna take our first chaturanga slow. On the inhale, shift your shoulders forward. And on the exhale, bend the elbows to hug the ribs. Inhale, peel the heart forward and up. Cobra or up dog, make sure you haven't sunk your shoulders into your ears. Keep length there. And then exhale, tuck toes, hinge at hips, downward facing. If you're newer to this practice, we call that a vinyasa or a flow. You can skip them at any point and hinge directly to down dog. Remember, I'm only a guide. This is your practice. Looking between hands, bend the knees. Let's make our way forward. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale to fold, hold here. We're gonna head directly to chair pose. So dropping our bottom, we'll meet in chair. And then you wanna check in with your tailbone and maybe tuck your pelvis slightly so the tailbone's facing down for a nice long spine. And if you don't see your feet when you gaze down, try to pull those knees back. Arms are up. And then maybe challenge yourself to lift all 10 toes off the mat, place them down gently, weights in the back of the foot. Static hold in our chair today. Continue to breathe. Let that breath guide you. And on your next exhale, straighten the legs, fold forward. Beautiful, inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant palms, step yourself to plank. Option for vinyasa, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, peel heart forward and up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Focusing on form today, three-legged dog. Inhale, right leg will lift, let's pause here. We're going for length, not height. So think about keeping those hips square and pressing that heel to the back of the room. You're wide in those fingertips. Good, scorpion dog, bend the knee, allow the heel to fall to the glute. Open up that hip. One more breath. Good, square those hips off once more and on your exhale, step the right foot through between the hands. Back knee is gonna drop, untuck your toes. Starting in a low lunge, I like easing into it, hands to the thigh. Taking your time with it, inhale to lift hips. Exhale to lower, two more like that. Option for a knee pad if there's any discomfort in the knee. Beautiful, let's settle into those hips now. We're headed towards our twist. Left palm will plant to the mat, right arm will lift up. You might stay where you're at or you might tuck your toes and engage your back leg, gazing at the ceiling. Good, next exhale, right palm to the mat. Building some strength in our lower body. You have the option to just tense your hands and peel your navel off your thigh, or reach your hands back, palms up, navel and chest lift. Continue to breathe here. And 
and on the exhale, replace the hands to the mat. Right foot stepping back to meet left. Let's do it with control. So engage the core first. Step it back lightly. Option for a vinyasa. Option to skip. Couple breaths once you get to down dog. All right, same thing. Other side, inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Remember, let's go for length, not just height. So we're pressing that heel towards the back of the room, but trying to keep our hips in line. Open up, scorpion dog, bend the knee, allow the heel to fall towards the glute. Beautiful, square those hips off, and on the next exhale, step it through. Back knee's gonna drop, maybe you grab that knee pad. We'll start with hands on our thigh. So same thing here, take your time, inhale to lift hips, exhale to lower. Inhale to lift, exhale lower, last one. Beautiful, settle in, let's head towards our twist. Right palm's gonna plant, mat or a block for length. Left arm up, gaze at the ceiling, it's okay for neck. Maybe that back knee stays down, maybe you engage by tucking toes and engaging legs. Continuing to breathe. And on your next exhale, left palm to the mat. Building that strength in the lower body once more. Again, option one, just tent your hands, fingertips to the mat, not a lot of weight in those fingertips, and peel your navel off your thigh so that your thigh hasn't become a shelf for your torso, or reach your arms back, palms up, navels off the thigh as well as chest. Pull your navel towards your spine to find that core engagement. Crown of the head's reaching forward, your fingers are spread wide, radiating whatever you want out into this world today. Feel that energy in your fingertips. And on the next exhale, replace those hands to the mat. Remember, we're stepping it to plank, option to go to table, but remember, Engage your core, try to step it back lightly. Option for vinyasa, option to skip. Let's meet in downward facing dog. Good job you guys. Look between those hands, bend your knees, step hop or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold and hold. We're gonna be coming to chair pose if you have a couple blocks around, you may want them towards the front of your mat. Drop your bottom, I'll meet you in chair. We're headed towards a transition to warrior three. So that's where the blocks would come in, so feel free to grab them. We're finding the weight in our right foot here. We're distributing the weight to the right, hovering the left foot. Crown of the head begins to reach forward as those arms reach back or really whatever arm variation your body prefers. We're here for a couple breaths. Hands can drop to the blocks for support. We're taking this to a standing split. So when you're ready, next exhale, release your hands to the mat or the block and lift the left leg as high as you're able. So the blocks would help create length here if you can't quite reach the floor. So feel free to grab them if you don't have blocks at home. There's options for other things. I just can't quite think of them right now. <laughs> uh, teaching live is an interesting experience. Next exhale, replace that left foot to the mat. You're in a forward fold. Let it all go. Treat it like you did ragdoll. You can sway left and right if you'd like. Beautiful, settle into center, inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant palms, step it back, maybe vinyasa, maybe you skip. We're all gonna meet in downward facing dog. Beautiful, look between those hands, bend the knees, step hop or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift, flat back. 
Exhale, fold, hold. Back to chair we will go. Drop that bottom. I'll meet you in chair. Grab those blocks. Transition them to the front of the mat. And then weights in the left foot. We'll hover the right. Take your time with it. We're in no rush. Crown of the head begins to reach forward. As we kick that leg back, maybe those arms reach back. They can be at your heart as well. Maybe they're on those blocks for some support. And on your next exhale, replace your hands to the mat and lift the right leg as high as you're able for that standing split. Next exhale, replace the right foot to meet the left, forward fold. Again, treat it like ragdoll. Let the head go. Let gravity do all the work here. All right, settling in, back to chair we go. Dropping to your bottom, I'll meet you in chair. We are going to challenge ourselves today so I want you to take it slow. We're gonna drop our bottom lower and lower, and we're gonna end up with that bottom on the mat headed to Navasana boat. So take your time with it. Modification would be bringing your hands to the mat for support with control, taking the bottom down to the mat, lifting the legs, Navasana boat pose. Good, chest is lifted tall. Nice straight spine, maybe hands are at the mat for support, perfectly fine option, maybe behind the thighs, maybe extended. Next exhale, bring the soles of the feet together. We're headed towards cobbler's pose or bound ankle. Hinge forward with that chest. Nice opening here. Good, one more time to bow. Lift the chest, lean back on the sits bones, legs up, maybe hands to the mat. Honor your body, your practice, maybe thighs, maybe arms extended. And then one more time, soles of the feet together, drop the feet to the mat, and then hinge forward. Good, next inhale, we'll slowly rise just with our chest. Knees come together. We're headed down to our mat. I want you to take your time with it and control with your abdomen as you slowly roll your spine to the mat. Hands can still be behind the thighs for support. Beautiful, knees face up still. Okay, feet are into the mat. We're headed to a reclined pigeon, right ankle over left knee. This might be where you stay depending on your hips. If you want more, you can thread through, grabbing the back of the thigh or the shin. But if threading through causes your head and back to lift, I would suggest pick the option that allows your head and back to rest on the mat. So we can focus just in this hip opening. Maybe if you want more, you can gently apply pressure, pressing that right knee out. Good. Go ahead and release and switch sides. Left ankle over right knee. Again, maybe you stay here. Maybe you thread through. Maybe your hip wants more and you apply just a slight bit of pressure in that left thigh or knee to press it outward. Next exhale, replace the feet to the mat. Knees are still facing the ceiling. If anyone's time sensitive on that 30 minutes, we may go a little bit over, not by much though. So knees face up, feet are about hip width. 
Let's walk our heels into our glutes. See if your fingertips can graze the back of your heels. We're headed towards the bridge pose. Hands are by your sides, palms are face down, and on the inhale, lift your hips high. Keep your chin at center. Try not to let all the weight settle into the neck. So press into the back of the head, back of the shoulders, not the weight in the neck. With control, we're going to slowly release our back down, vertebrae at a time, lasting the hips that kill. Good job, you guys. So we have a few options. This is an all-level flow. So option one, we're just going to lift our feet up towards the ceiling. This is legs against the wall without a wall. So it's kind of like a restorative inversion, helping you increase circulation, strengthen your nervous system. Maybe you stay here. If you have a block at home and you want a supported shoulder stand, you can lift your hips, place the block underneath your sacrum, and then lift the feet to the sky, just bringing your hips above your heart. If shoulder stands in your practice, that's where we're headed. Please don't do this at home if you've never done it before. If you're headed towards shoulder stand, use the support of the hands towards the lower back. Remember, we're trying to be one active line. So hug those hips towards you as you press your toes towards the front of the room, same concept, don't let the weight settle into the neck. Instead, press into the back of the head, back of the shoulders. If you chose shoulder stand, we're headed to plow. Feet will come behind the head. This is just an option. So take the option that works for you. If you're still in legs up against the wall and it's been too much, you can replace your feet to the mat. Whatever you chose, we're all gonna come out of it slowly with control, the way we got there. Rolling your spine to the mat with control. Let's all meet with our knees and our chest. Maybe you wanna rock left and right if that feels good. stillness at center we'll take our arms out to a T and when you're ready drop your knees to the right and take your gaze left you can find twists here the goal is both shoulder blades staying on the mat with control of your abdomen lift your knees through center and head to the other side knees will drop left gaze will go right same concept both shoulder blades down Control of your abdomen, lift those knees to center. Let's all hug them into the chest. And then option to stay here and rock left and right, or if you'd like, happy baby. You can bend your knees, feet are flexed like you're stamping that ceiling. Hands grab outer edge of the feet. Try to press your sacrum down into the mat. So don't let your lower back lift too far off the mat. Option to rock left and right if it feels good. Or stillness. Remember, this is your practice. Maybe you prefer that reclined straddle, straightening one or both legs. Let it feel good. You burned it. Whatever you chose, we're going to meet with knees back in our chest. You're always welcome to take any final movements your body may want. Otherwise, give yourself this last hug of gratitude. Thank yourself for showing up on your mat. And when you're ready, we'll release to our final resting posture of Shavasana. Extend those legs long. Take your time with it. Get your wiggles out. And hopefully you have room, maybe kick the legs and arms wide. Take a scan of your body. Really 
acknowledge anywhere you might still be carrying tension. Maybe you unclench your jaw. Maybe release the furrow between your eyebrows. Maybe you go as far as softening behind your eyes, your eyelids. Letting your breath come naturally. Feeling that earth underneath you support you. Allowing you to feel safe, secure. Remembering that with every exhale, you have an opportunity, you have a chance to let go of something that might be weighing you down. Something that's not serving you. The more we can make time to let go of those things, the more space we can make to allow something positive to come in. Shavasana as long as they'd like. If you're ready, we'll begin to bring some awareness to our body. Maybe you're wiggling fingers and toes. overhead just like a good morning stretch stretch from end to end from the toes up the entire body and out the fingertips good bring your knees to our chest we'll roll to the right side in that seagull position you can utilize your right bicep as a pillow left palm can be placed in here in front of you pausing here Let's make our way back to a comfortable seated position. And if you feel comfortable, I'd encourage you to keep your eyes closed. Once you get there, inhale those arms up one last time. Again, think of what you can draw into your heart and slowly bring it in. Pressing the backs of the thumbs in the chest. Acknowledging that heartbeat within you taking that as a reminder, an opportunity to be grateful for each new day. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this practice. Always thank yourself for investing in you. Remembering we are better to those we love when we take some time to love ourselves. Together we will heal our practice with Namaste.